So far, we've been looking at situations where we just had a single pump and we were interested in the performance characteristics of that pump by itself. But often, we'll be combining pumps in order to meet our flow objectives. So let's consider two cases, pumps in series and pumps in parallel, just in pairs like this. And we can use the concepts here to extend this idea uh, further to other configurations. So if I put two pumps in series like this, all the flow that comes in through this one is also going through this one and coming out over here. So the total flow of the combined pumping system is just equal to the flow through pump number one, and the same flow is going through pump number two. So those are both the same flow rate. But the head rise, if we go from here, and we'll have a rise across this first pump, then we'll go from here and have a rise across this second pump, and we're gonna get those two in series. It will go from a low pressure to a medium pressure, and a medium pressure up to a higher pressure, so that the total head from the combination will be equal to the head rise across pump number one plus the head rise across pump number two. So if we look at that idea on our performance curve for our pumps, we typically have a flow, and head and we're interested in the performance of the pump and we see a, a variation that typically looks something like this for a single pump. So if that was our single pump we'll have the same flow for our combined pumps so we're going to be going over the same flow range from here to here but the head is the combination for the two so if this was one pump then I'd have twice as much head for the same flow when I combine the two. So from here I'd go up to there and from here, I'd go up to there. And that's the combined head flow curve that I'd get if I put two identical pumps together. So if I've got both of them, I've got higher head for the same flow. And we actually exploit this approach in multi-stage pumps. Multi-stage pumps give us higher head because they're basically multiple pumps in the same casing. So it's as if we took two pumps, put them in series, and also put them in the same cast iron casing with two impellers with the outlet of the first impeller feeding directly into the inlet of the second impeller. And we can do that for two or three or five or ten or as many stages as we want to achieve very high heads at moderate flow rates. Now let's look what happens if we put the pumps in parallel. Well, if I've got flow going through pump one and flow going through pump two, then the combined flow will be the flow going through both of them. So the total flow will be Q1 plus Q2. And with these two pumps in parallel, well, the head rise, the pressure increase from here to here, and the pressure increase from here to here must be the same. And even if these pumps are different from one another in their performance characteristics, we'll wind up with the flows adjusting such that the head rise across here and the head rise across here will wind up being the same. So the total head, it's just equal to H1, not plus this time. It's the same H1 and H2. So if I look at my pump characteristic curve, once again, I've got flow and head and if this is my single unit pump, this is just one pump, if I combine the two together, I'll get the same head, but I'll now get twice as much flow. So instead of that point, I'll be out here. Instead of this point, I'll be out here. And so this is the result that I'll get from the combination of the two of them, is a head flow curve like that. So when I have both pumps operating in parallel, then I'll get much higher flow, but at the same head. The big advantage here is if we have a lower demand, if we don't need all of the flow rate, we can reduce the total flow provided by the pumping system simply by turning off one of these pumps. Now in a practical system, for instance, if we're looking for at domestic water supply, we're going to have very high requirements in the morning when everybody's showering, not nearly as high a domestic uh, water supply requirement in the middle of the day when most people are working or doing something else. So we can adjust for demand by 
changing the number of pumps that we're operating. We could have two in parallel, we could have three in parallel or more to allow us to manage our demand requirements while still staying and operating somewhere in the sweet spot here at the highest efficiency in the range of flows where the pump was designed to operate. Now, why would we be going with combinations like this? Well, we saw one example in the reality check video. That was where we had the combination of the low lift and high lift pumps. We had essentially two pumps in series, one low lift and one high lift with different flow characteristics. The result was our inlet, we had a low pressure, atmospheric pressure or somewhere close to it. At the outlet of this pump, we'd reached some kind of medium pressure level and we could put that into the inlet of this pump and finally we'd have our higher pressure level at the outlet to supply the system. So this low pressure is around PATM. Intermediate, we might be one atmosphere above that, around 100 kPa. And finally, out here, we might be something more like 1000 kPa for our system. Now why would we go that way? Well, if we're at a low inlet pressure here, we may have difficulty satisfying the NPSH. So we will want to choose a slow moving pump, which is going to have a low head rise, and thus it's also going to wind up delivering us a low NPSH requirement. And if we can have our low pressure here matched up with a pump that really only needs a low net positive suction head, then we'll have no cavitation. But one of the consequences of having this pump running slowly is that it ha has a low head rise across the pump. We're only picking up about one atmosphere of pressure rise. So to get this low NPSH, we had to put up with this low head increase. But now we've got a higher pressure. We can have this high lift pump run really quickly. We've got a nice fast pump. If it's fast, we're going to have a higher delta H. So we're going to get a higher pressure rise across this second pump. But because it's running quickly, because we've got this higher delta H, we're going to have a high NPSH requirement. And fortunately, we've now got the pressure up to a high enough level that we can meet that higher NPSH requirement and still have no cavitation. So here's a very practical example of a place where we'd put a low lift pump in series with a high lift pump in order to achieve the objectives we need because the combination of the two pumps together gives us a low NPSH requirement at the inlet while giving us a high overall increase in the pressure. So this is the kind of uh, arrangement that we'd, we'd wind up with in lots of practical pumping situations. Now, if we need this system to run all day, every day, to supply either our domestic water or to supply, say, cooling water in a, a process plant or a refinery, then we'd better have some redundancy. And we might have two low lift pumps so that we can take one out of service at any time that we need to to do maintenance and still cover the needs with the, uh, with the other pump. So we can run these two in parallel to provide our supply and we might have then additional high lift pumps maybe three separate high lift pumps we could make sure that we had two available at any given time to meet the requirements and we could combine these outputs all together to go off to supply our city or our process plant so this is a practical configuration where you could be combining multiple pumps in parallel in series in order to meet practical piping objectives. The supply to the plant, which has got to be operating 24-7.